Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Now, I have no idea how many times we have watched the movie, but last night we watched the 2018 film Peter Rabbit based on the book The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. One of the characters in the movie, and also in Miss Potter's book series, is Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Like always, after watching the movie last night, I was inspired to find a story written by Beatrix Potter, and today I decided to read the story, The Tale of Mrs. Tiggywinkle. One thing I have always wondered, and I think I have mentioned this before, is why, at the time these books were written, were there a lot of authors using the same names for their animal characters? Maybe I'll have to find a book or article or something to figure that out. And if I find something interesting, I'll pass it along. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The Tale of Mrs. Tiggywinkle Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Lucy who lived at a farm called Little Town. She was a good little girl, only she was always losing her pocket handkerchiefs. One day, little Lucy came into the farmyard crying. Oh, she did cry so. I've lost my pocket handkin. Three handkins and a penny. Have you seen them, Tabby Kitten? The kitten went on washing her white paws, so Lucy asked a speckled hen. Sally Henny Penny, have you found three pocket handkins? But the speckled hen ran into a barn clucking. I go barefoot, barefoot, barefoot. And then Lucy asked Cock Robin, sitting on a twig. Cock Robin looked sideways at Lucy with his bright black eye, and he flew over a stile and away. Lucy climbed upon the stile and looked up at the hill behind Little Town, a hill that goes up, up, into the clouds as though it had no top. And a great way up the hillside, she thought she saw some white things spread upon the grass. Lucy scrambled up the hill as fast as her stout legs would carry her. She ran along a steep pathway up and up until Little Town was right away down below. She could have dropped a pebble down the chimney. Presently, she came to a spring bubbling out from the hillside. Someone had stood a tin can upon a stone to catch the water, but the water was already running over for the can was no bigger than an egg cup. And where the sand upon the path was wet, there were footmarks of a very small person. Lucy ran on and on. The path ended under a big rock. The grass was short and green, and there were clothes, props cut from bracken stems, with lines of plaited rushes and a heap of tiny clothespins, but no pocket handkerchiefs. But there was something else, a door, straight into the hill, and inside it someone was singing, Lily white and clean, oh, with little frizz between, oh, smooth and hot, red, rusty spot, never here be seen, oh. Lucy knocked once, twice, and interrupted the song. A little frightened voice called out, Who's that? Lucy opened the door, and what do you think there was inside the hill? A nice clean kitchen with a flagged floor and wooden beams, just like any other farm kitchen. Only the ceiling was so low that Lucy's head nearly touched it, and the pots and pans were small, and so was everything there. There was a nice hot, singy smell, and at the table, with an iron in her hand, stood a very stout, short person staring anxiously at Lucy. Her print gown was tucked up, 
and she was wearing a large apron over her striped petticoat. Her little black nose went sniffle, sniffle, snuffle, and her eyes went twinkle, twinkle, and underneath her cap, where Lucy had yellow curls, the little person had prickles. Who are you? said Lucy. Have you seen my pocket handkins? The little person made a bob curtsy. Oh, yes, if you please. My name is Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Oh, yes, if you please, m'm. I'm an excellent clear starcher. And she took something out of a clothes basket and spread it on the ironing blanket. What's that thing? said Lucy. That's not my pocket hankin. Oh, no, if you please, m'm. That's a little scarlet waistcoat belonging to Cock Robin. And she ironed it and folded it and put it on one side. Then she took something else off a clothes horse. That isn't my penny, said Lucy. Oh, no, if you please em, that's a damask tablecloth belonging to Jenny Wren. Look how it's stained with currant wine. It's very bad to wash, said Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Mrs. Tiggywinkle's nose went sniffle, sniffle, snuffle, and her eyes went twinkle, twinkle, and she fetched another hot iron from the fire. There's one of my pocket handkins, cried Lucy, and there's my penny. Mrs. Tiggywinkle ironed it and goffered it and shook out the frills. Oh, that is lovely, said Lucy. And what are those long yellow things with fingers like gloves? Oh, that's a pair of stockings belonging to Sally Hennypenny. Look how she's worn the heels out with scratching in the yard. She'll very soon go barefoot, said Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Why, there's another handkersniff, but it isn't mine. It's red. Oh, no, if you please em, that one belongs to old Mrs. Rabbit, and it did so smell of onions. I've had to wash it separately. I can't get out the smell. There's another one of mine, said Lucy. What are those funny little white things? That's a pair of mittens belonging to Tabby Kitten. I only have to iron them. She washes them herself. There's my last pocket hankin, said Lucy. And what are you dipping into the basin of starch? They're little dicky short fronts belonging to Tom Titmouse. Most terrible particular, said Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Now I finished my ironing. I'm going to air some clothes. What are those dear, soft, fluffy things, said Lucy. Oh, those are woolly coats belonging to the little lambs at Skeleagle. Will their jackets take off? asked Lucy. Oh, yes, if you please em. Look at the sheep mark on the shoulder. And here's one marked for Gatesgarth, and three that come from Littletown. They're always marked at washing, said Mrs. Tiggywinkle. And she hung up all sorts and sizes of clothes, small brown coats of mice, and one velvety black moleskin waistcoat, and a red tailcoat with no tail belonging to Squirrel Nutkin, and a very much shrunk blue jacket belonging to Peter Rabbit, and a petticoat not marked that had gone lost in the washing, and at last the basket was empty. Then Mrs. Tiggywinkle made tea, a cup for herself and a cup for Lucy. They sat before the fire on a bench and looked sideways at one another. Mrs. Tiggywinkle's hand holding the teacup was very, very brown and very, very wrinkly with the soap suds, and all through her gown and her cap there were hairpins sticking wrong and out, so that Lucy didn't like to sit too near her. When they had finished the tea, they tied up the clothes in bundles, and Lucy's pocket handkerchiefs were folded up inside her clean penny and fastened with a silver safety pin. And then they made up the fire with turf, and came out and locked the door and hid the key under the door sill. Then away down the hill trotted Lucy and Mrs. Tiggywinkle with the bundles of clothes. All the way down the path, little animals came out of the fern to meet them. The very first that they met were Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. And she gave them their nice clean clothes, and all the little animals and birds were so very much obliged to dear Mrs. Tiggywinkle. So that at the bottom of the hill, when they came home to the stile, 
there was nothing left to carry except Lucy's one little bundle. Lucy scrambled up the stile with the bundle in her hand, and then she turned to say good night and to thank the washerwoman, but what a very odd thing. Mrs. Tiggywinkle had not waited either for thanks or for the washing bill. She was running, running, running up the hill, and where was her white frilled cap, and her shawl, and her gown, and her petticoat? And how small she had grown, and how brown, and covered with prickles. Why, Mrs. Tiggywinkle was nothing but a hedgehog. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com, or you can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage, and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history, and it's come to a final stop.